I'm going to talk a little bit about hemp production in Maryland. And honestly, I'm not going to bore you with data. The most, the, the biggest component of this presentation is a case study looking at some of the economic data and looking at some of the numbers of the potential profits that you can actually make from hemp. All right. So there's not going to be a lot of graphs, not a lot of tables, pictures and numbers. All right. So for those of you who are not familiar with growing hemp, I almost was going to ask who's growing hemp, but I don't want anyone to have to incriminate themselves. You don't have to share that information if you don't want to. All right. We talk about producing hemp. There's really two different types of basically hemp production systems. Okay. There's on the left here, the image is, um, Growing hemp with the intention to harvest the biomass, the leafy material, and extract CBD, all right? CBD is the magic chemical, right? You all have seen CBD everywhere, like lotions, potions, in like lip balm that they sell at the gas station, right? There's like CBD and everything now, and there's claims that it's going to cure every disease and cancer and everything in there, all right? So there's definitely at least somewhat of an interest in... Um, CBD production systems and extracting that CBD out of those plants, all right? And there's a reason that, well, other than I got volunteered to work on this project, but I think there actually was a logic to having myself, who's kind of more on the agronomy side, and Andrew Ristvi, who's our com commercial horticulture specialist at University of Maryland, I think there was a really good reason that we've kind of partnered together to take on this project, and it's really because there's kind of two major production systems. So if you look at the CBD production system on the left side here, we like to compare this to growing tobacco, growing tomatoes, growing some kind of a, a specialty product where it's really important that you start clean. Maybe you're going to lay plastic with some irrigation underneath. Um, you're going to really kind of treat that hemp crop almost as like a specialty crop, right? A lot of input, a lot of attention, a lot of scouting, all right? Versus the image on the right, which is producing industrial hemp for the intention of harvesting the seed or the grain, Right, and cutting down these really tall, this is a pretty short plant, but these really extremely tall, skinny plants and extracting the fiber out of the stalks of this plant. All right, and I like to compare growing fiber hemp to more like um, growing, growing hay. It really fits more into kind of an agronomic system. All right, the point I want to make about industrial hemp though, and, and how it is different from producing marijuana, which is still illegal, all right. The difference between hemp and marijuana is the concentration of THC. All right. This is another chemical in the plant. This is the phytochemical that gets you high. All right. This is the good stuff. Okay. And so legally, federally, we didn't make this law. MDA didn't make this law. This is a federal law to be considered for a plant to be considered industrial hemp. It has to have a THC concentration of less than 0.3%. All right, we have no control over that number. Okay, so all of these plants that we are showing are considered industrial hemp until 0.3% THC. Above that, it's considered marijuana and it's illegal. All right, so since I didn't ask, so I'm going to assume that everyone hasn't seen hemp yet, so I've got a couple pictures here which we can go through pretty quick. So we did a nitrogen fertilization study down the road at the Y Research and Education Center this year. All of our research in 2019 focused on CBD hemp, okay? This production system here on the left. That was where most of the interest was. So that's where Andrew and I chose to kind of focus our efforts in the first year. 2019 was the first year we could grow hemp in Maryland. So as I mentioned, uh, we laid down plastic. This was an image of kind of putting our nitrogen out. So this was mid-June. I've got the dates on everything, starting with a nice clean field, all right? June 17th is when we uh, transplanted our little babies into the plastic. Um, I, I always say when I look at this picture, I assume it's like when you're a parent and you look back at old pictures, you're like, oh, they were so small. Like, I look back on this, I'm like, I can't believe those giant plants were ever this small when we planted them in the ground. So, oh, they were so small. 
So June 17th, about a month later, those plants were huge. It was amazing to me, at least. I was in shock at how quickly these plants were able to put on biomass, right? How, how quickly they were able to grow. So that was July 24th. This is um, uh, August 19th. Again, they, these plants got huge. We finally realized at some point that they needed to be staked. Those stakes were probably about as tall as I am. So some of these plants got really big um, really quickly. As we entered into early September, this is when we entered into flowering. So there's our, our beautiful bud right there. I'm going to talk a little bit about that in a second. Um, I have up to this point, I showed you some good pictures of some nice green plants, and I may lead you to believe that it was all great and we grew perfect plants, but that was not the reality of the situation. So 2019, as I mentioned, was the first year that we were able to grow hemp in Maryland. And so we knew we were going to get pests and we knew we were going to get diseases. We just didn't know exactly which ones. Um, and so uh, we ended up, we, we, we definitely had some trouble. Andrew and I were happy that we replicated and we put extra plants out there. So you'll see this guy right here up front uh, on the left side of the um, slide here. We had a major issue with fusarium crown rot. So our plants started kind of, they got an infection right at the base of the stem. And I was saying that they kind of imploded in on themselves. They got really dry, even though they had enough water. And they just kind of fell in on themselves. We almost could predict which one was going to be next. We could like see it coming. So you'll see this guy in the front that we probably eventually pulled out. You'll notice that we have a couple bare stakes where those plants ended up dying and we had to remove them. But I will point your attention to that really tall guy back there. So we were okay. We were, we were fairly successful um, with uh, what we produced this year in 2019. And then end of September, I was joking that it was Christmas in September because I felt like we were cutting down Christmas trees. Got my technician with a chainsaw and I would like point to a tree and he'd cut it down. And it was, so it was kind of like Christmas in September. I really um, enjoyed the harvest part, even though I didn't really have to do much except point and watch it happen. So, um, <laughs> but you can see how large these plants were and they really did require, uh, Andrew at one point was like, let's just get a hand saw. I was like, Andrew, they make chainsaws for a reason. And like, this is that reason. So um, that was the end of September there. All right, so we had two kind of major products, major outputs of this plant that were fairly lucrative in 2019. So first we had these colas, these buds, right? The, the tail end of those stems, all right? And, and actually, Andrew and I had no idea that this was going to be um, it, this wasn't even on our radar until one of our partnering growers had mentioned to us that they had a market up in New York City and they were selling this stuff as smokable hemp. So not as marijuana, but as smokable hemp. And they were getting between $50 and $500 per dry pound. And at about half a pound to a full pound per plant, this was pretty um, lucrative for some of our growers. All right, But the main product that folks were intending to produce with um, growing industrial hemp was this biomass, all right? This leafy material that comes off the plant. And the value that we have in this biomass, it's basically the percent CBD. So how much CBD is in this biomass? And that's basically what you get paid on, okay? So we had a lot of growers coming to us. There were a lot of people that were initially interested, maybe, I don't want to say suckered, because that's a negative word, but folks who were led to believe that this was going to be a really lucrative crop. You can make up to $60,000 per acre. Now, I'm sure if, and if someone told me that, I might be a little bit curious, and I might want to investigate it also. So we're going to go through a case study with some real numbers that we got from some of our growers and see if we can actually get to that $60,000. Was that a real claim, or was that fake? All right. Any guesses? <laughs> All right, so let's go through this case study. So as I said, the value of that biomass, of that hemp biomass, is based on the percent CBD per pound, all right? And it's just like any other commodity. That price is going to go up and down depending on supply and demand. So last summer, back before we, before anyone here really even harvested their crop yet, right? Right before harvest, that price per percent CBD was up to $4, 
all right? When Andrew and I made these slides at the end of 2019, it was down to a dollar. And I think I have heard recently that it may even be half of that now, okay? So this is susceptible to supply and demand just like any other commodity. Right before harvest, when supply was low, the price was high. Now there's a glut of it on the market and the price has gone down. So we're gonna stick with $1 for my examples because it makes the math really easy, all right? And we're gonna go with an average yield for that biomass is 2,000 pounds per acre. We didn't make this up, this came from one of our growers, all right? All these numbers I'm about to show you are real world numbers, came from one of our growers who was selling this product. All right, so let's take a look at the inputs. Seven to $14 per pound of that dry biomass, all right? And there's a range. So um, the grower that we got this information from, he's a high quality grower, all right? He put a lot of effort, a lot of time into producing a really quality product, all right? Um, other people may have higher input costs if you're new to growing and you don't have a plastic layer, plastic, irrigation, right? That first year your inputs might be a little higher. Maybe that second year you might come down a little closer to that $7 just because you've already made some of that initial investment, okay? So that's $7 to $14 for production. Now we're looking at another $14 harvest cost per pound, all right? There's no... Me there's no mechanization with this. This is hand hard. I mean, you saw my technician Joe out there with a the chainsaw. We all cut those plants apart by hand with a pair of scissors, all right? I'm, I know that the folks down at Y Research are not thrilled that we're growing hemp again because it was a lot of work. We all took turns sitting there. Even my husband and I went in on a weekend and cut these plants apart, all right? This is hand labor. All right, so you can argue if $14 is high or not, but again, this is a quality grower and this is what he pays his labor, all right? Not included is you're looking to another $15 to $20 per pound for processing to get that CBD out of that plant. But we're not gonna include the processing, we're just gonna look at um, production and harvest. Okay, so as I said, we're paid based on the percent CBD. So this is real data, this is Andrew and I's plants at the Y throughout the growing season, and we're looking at percent CBD. So you see, we left some of our plants out until the middle of October. We wanted to see how high we could get that CBD, and we are about at 15% CBD, all right? So let's go through. This is best case scenario, all right? I'm gonna give you 15% CBD. It's possible we did it at the Y. I'm gonna be nice and let's just say price is high, $4 for each percent CBD. All right, that's $60 per dry pound, $60,000 for 1,000 pounds, 2,000 pounds per acre, 120,000. All right, this is gross. We haven't taken out our cost yet. All right, so we're gonna use, we're gonna go conservative. We're gonna use $14 a pound for production and $14 a pound for that harvest labor. All right, $28,000 per 1,000 pounds, 2,000 pounds per acre, that's about 56,000 per acre. All right, so 120 minus 56, you're at 64,000. Maybe that first slide wasn't too off, right? Maybe it's possible. But that was the best case scenario. That was high CBD and high percent CBD price, $4, all right? I told you that that was not the reality. I told you that now we are somewhere down below a dollar, but we're gonna use the dollar because it makes the math easy, all right? So we'll, we'll stick with that 15% CBD and a dollar for each percent point, $15 per pound, $30,000 per acre, all right? Again, that's gross. Costs are the same. I didn't change anything, I just copied that slide. So 30,000 minus 56, that's a negative sign, I turned it red, all right? All right. All right, so if you thought that that was the bad news, just wait, I'm not done yet, all right? So, November 1st, 2020 is a really important date this year, all right? Maryland and the Maryland Department of Agriculture has decided that we are going to continue to function under the 2014 Farm Bill, just like we did last year, okay? but November 1st, 2020, whether we like it or not, we have to jump on board with the 2018 Farm Bill, 
All right. So let's talk about one of the major changes that is going to affect all of our growers this year on November 1st when we have no choice, but we have to get on board with the 2018 Farm Bill. Okay, so I told you on the first slide that THC, which is the phytochemical that gets you high, this has to be below 0.3%, all right? This is true until October 31st, 2020, all right? Once we switch over to the 18 Farm Bill, we are also concerned about THCA. This is another chemical, and this is a precursor to the THC, that means it starts out as THCA, when it's exposed to heat, it becomes THC. So November 1st, we are worried about, about both THC and its precursor. It's a sum, right? We're, it's, it's a little more complicated than that, but we're basically going to add them together, all right? So November 1st, this sum this call, this is called THC potency. Now this sum all has to be below 0.3. The goalpost has moved, okay? So let's take a look at what that looks like with some real data. Again, these are our plants that we grew at Y Research and Education Center, all right? As the season went on, these hashed bar lines, that's the THC, the phytochemical that gets you high. And I put a nice reference line there at 0.3, so we all knew that we were good. We stayed low in terms of THC the whole season, all right? But the sum of these bars, the total height of these bars, represents that potency, the precursor and the phytochemical, all right? Not so good, huh? We had marijuana by the end of the season, right? So, September 5th is about our cutoff. So we, in theory, should have harvested our crop before, sometime before November 5th. So let's go through one more economic scenario, all right? Let's go back to our CBD graph. This was the same one as before, the growing season, except now we're looking at CBD. Well, September 5th, we peaked out around maybe 5% CBD. We're gonna use 5% because it makes the numbers easy, all right? So, best case scenario, you have to harvest your plant early. This is potential for 2020. This is what our growers could be looking at in 2020. You got 5% CBD because you had to harvest early because of the new THC regs, all right? Let's just pretend, even though all estimations say that the CBD price point is never going to go this high again, but let's just pretend, for argument's sake, that you get the $4 for each percent CBD. Let's go through the math. 20 per dry pound, that's $40,000 per acre. Cost is the same. Your cost isn't changing just because the regs changed. All right? Negative, 16,000. All right, that was best case scenario. Let's take a look at reality 2020, all right? You still have only 5% CBD. You have to harvest your plant early, all right? Now you only get a dollar per percent CBD. You're only looking at $10,000 an acre. Your costs are still the same. You're at negative $46,000 an acre. Hopefully you are all seeing the message that I am putting forward here. We got a lot, awful lot of red numbers here at the end, okay? So I gave this talk um, two weeks ago at Caroline County Agronomy Meeting, and I've been giving this talk for a little while. I was surprised I didn't notice it. Gentleman came up to me and he said, you know, you're being awful generous with that $2,000 per pound. He goes, that's the amount of biomass that you got when you let that plant grow until October. He goes, but now you're saying you're gonna harvest that plant a whole month early. He goes, you're being awfully generous with that biomass. So this value could be even less than that because there's a pretty good chance that that biomass is going to be even less than the numbers we used for our estimates, all right? So he only made this a more gloomy picture and I didn't even wanna go through and recalculate the numbers again. I just thought I would verbally point that out, all right? So, I also want to put this disclaimer because Andrew and I have been going around and we've been giving this talk all over and occasionally 
we get someone who is very upset that we are standing up here and showing a lot of these red numbers, right? A grower that's upset, that was promised a lot of money, or that thinks that there's really a future and can make money. And I have to go back to what is in basically Andrew and I's job description, all right? We work for University of Maryland Extension, and the point of our jobs, the reason we exist, is to make sure that our producers and our growers are profitable. All right, and we have to pre present unbiased information. These are not fake numbers. These are real numbers. Anyone could have sat down with a calculator and calculated them out themselves, okay? It is our job to make sure folks are profitable, and sometimes that means not taking a risk and not taking an investment into something that is not going to make you money, okay? So Andrew and I have literally no opinion either way on, on the hemp industry. We are simply just here to present the data and present the information that we have. All right, so feel free to reach out to either of us with questions. Uh, one more slide before we go to lunch. I just wanna let you all know what we've got coming up this year. We're gonna repeat our nitrogen fertilization trial. I'm gonna grow some hemp on some high pea soils. I'm really interested in taking a look at how quickly and if the, these hemp plants might be able to help draw down some of that soil pea that we've been talking about pretty much all day. And Andrew and I are participating in a national um, fiber variety trial, so we can hopefully identify um, some varieties that will grow well here in Maryland. So we're shifting some of our efforts this year kind of over to the fiber hemp uh, side because we really think that longevity for the market CBD hemp is not going to be profitable in the long term. We're hoping that fiber hemp may be slightly more profitable. So feel free to reach out to us. I can take questions unless Jenny doesn't want me to, but I'll be here for lunch, so you... Yeah. Sure. All right, so the question was about growing fiber and growing, I don't need to show slides, you all can, growing fiber and growing CBD hemp. So I didn't mention, because I only had a short period of time, but when you produce hemp for CBD, those are only female plants. So we go out and we scout the fields, and if we see any male plants, we rip them out of the field, right? They're, they're a pest just like anything else, all right? We... <laughs> I didn't even realize what I just said. <laughs> but but um, so the issue that Dan brought up was that could we potentially have issues where there are folks who are growing fiber hemp, which we don't care, males and female plants, in the vicinity of folks growing CBD hemp that is just females, and is there the issue of cross-pollination? Yeah, that's a, that's a very serious concern. I don't know that there's anything you know, regulation-wise currently being done to kind of address that, but it is a major concern for folks who are growing CBD hemp. It's even more of a concern for folks who have invested a lot of money into growing medical marijuana. That's not part of our purview, but it's the same type of growing system. So yeah, it could potentially come to a head. Thanks, that's a good question. So Danny asked, we planted our crop pretty late, well, late-ish in June, and would there be an advantage to planting it earlier, like we would have bo more biomass accumulation, maybe potentially lower THC? Um, you know, that's a good question. I, I don't think, okay, we currently in Maryland don't know enough at this time. I'm, I have concerns about getting it out a little too early, but I think we definitely could have gone a little earlier, but I also think that Regardless, I think the THC and the CBD accumulate in that plant similarly. So I don't know that it matters. Would we be, would have we been able to get our biomass harvested and on the market quicker and maybe get a better price? Maybe. Um, but I don't know that it would really have a major effect on that final level of THC and CBD. But that's a really good question. All right, come find me at lunchtime if you've got any more questions. Thank you all. Thank you, Nicole. <laughs> Thank you.